Hi, my name is Irena and I'm from Lviv. My home, my land, my nation is Ukraine, where I don't feel safe anymore. Our land is crying because even children are dying. We have a good leaders now. We have an army I'm really proud of, but we cannot protect ourselves from the bombs and rockets and the sky has become our enemy. Please tell me why NATO is not helping us right now by closing the sky. At least this is 21st century. Thousands of people are now homeless in our country or even dead or injured. What kind of world do we live in not stopping it? Please explain. Thank you. Yeah, Brendan O'Connor, I'll go to you on this. Um, after the election this year, depending on the outcome, you may well be mm. Defence Minister. These will be the questions that will be landing on your desk. And when we look around and we've been hearing this, yes, NATO is supporting, yes, the US is supporting, but they have said absolutely we will not put troops on the ground. The US will not spill blood to defend Ukrainians on their soil. Mm. And you hear this question a lot. Why not? Well, I think, firstly, it's not just whether, in fact, the United States wants to uh, invest more in this conflict uh, for its own domestic purposes. For example, President Biden may well be concerned about what people at home would be thinking about insofar as U US involvement. But it's also about uh, a calculation about mm. how uh, Putin would respond if NATO, uh, NATO countries were involved in a military conflict. Now, that is, a ra that is really uh, ratcheting up uh, and escalating uh, the conflict, which could lead to untold, unknown consequences, but they would be dire. Um, now, I'm not saying that, may not, that could not happen. Uh, already we're concerned, of course, uh, Poland being a neighbour uh, of Ukraine, uh, could, there could easily be an inadvertent incursion or assault on that country whilst uh, Russia's attacking Ukraine. Now, at the moment, I think if you look at the extent of the support through uh, military and not, um, lethal and non-lethal support, if you like, by, uh, by NATO and by other countries, mm. including Australia, I think that's the appropriate response. But we're hearing it's not enough, Jason Falinski. We heard from yeah. Irina there in the question. Why not close the skies? What are other things that can be done, let alone going in and actually helping out oh, on the ground? Uh, Sorry, can I just yeah. say? Yeah, yeah. Can I just say this that that as we are having this conversation, you can be assured of this: that national security agencies of countries involved in this matter would be considering all of these options. If you think about it, it's within although, a week. Although the, the option yeah. has been taken off the table, um, Joe Biden has said we will not be doing that. He said it again but, in but the State of the Stan, Union. Yeah. He did that for a good reason. He said in the State of Union address, yeah. "If we are in conflict with Russia." It will be a world war, mm. possibly nuclear exchange. So the reason why there is not a, a no-fly zone is because this is not Syria, uh, this is not Iraq. Uh, to put a no-fly zone over the Ukraine against Russia would mean direct conflict with Russia, which would mean a wider war, which could mean a nuclear war. And, and, Jason, does that then not say to Vladimir Putin that he is an open door? Um, Stan, I go back to what I said earlier. I mean, um, you know, Barack Obama stood up and said a red line in Syria mm. is the use of chemical weapons. A year to the day, the Assad regime used chemical weapons and the United States did not respond. That sent a signal to authoritarian regimes around the world that Western governments were not willing to take the risk. Now, Germany opposed um, the sending arms to Ukraine before this conflict began because they said it would be provocative. It, has, it has now decided that it will it, commit now to it that. Has so decided, we're, seeing a, we're seeing a change. Now it has decided to do it. Now, uh, Dennis is in a better position than I am to comment on this, and I suspect Olga is mm. too. But I openly wonder whether if Germany was not so reliant on Russian gas, if that would still have been their view. There is no doubt by us not taking action earlier 
and not actually providing the support that the Ukrainians need, and by us I mean the West, if we have made this a less costless exercise for Vladimir Putin to undertake? Now, that's a, now that's, that's a question for historians. But where we stand today is, Dennis is right, you cannot have direct conflict between the United States and Russia and the Russian Federation. Well, Joe, Joe Biden has said that's a, and, that's and, a world war. And, and the reasons for that are that it quickly escalates out yeah. of control. However, there are plenty of other things we can do to help the Ukrainians protect themselves and defend their sovereign nation. Let, let me get a comment from Olga on that. Is, is, do, you, do you share the view of, of Arena there that the West could be doing more? I do. In fact, I do, because I, I do agree that uh, this was happening, we saw this coming, this build-up was escalating, and every time there were comments about tough guy diplomacy, about uh, posturing on the part of Russia and the United States, and that makes me very angry, because people who made those comments have no stake, they have a privilege of sitting somewhere in Australia, uh, in the West, and just saying that nothing will happen, it's not a real threat. We saw, that, we saw it happening and it continued to build up. And as, as Christina said, once it started, it was already too late. And so I do think right now, my question to, to everyone, I guess, is do, is there then a threshold where this will be a world war, right? How many Ukrainians do have to die? How much has to be destroyed before the West steps up 